Hey everyone, this is Lisa from Life in Layouts, and today I am back with day number 10 of 30 Days of Sketches with Chrissy's Beautiful Life. Today's sketch comes from Brianna Spores, and I really like this layout. I actually pulled out one of my newer collections from Simple Stories called Just Beachy. I just recently got this, and I do have an unboxing video. I will link it here for you guys if you would like to check it out. Instead of having the big banner pieces at the bottom, I decided that I was going to create some waves. Now, I did use two sheets of paper from the collection, but I also pulled a bunch of other blue paper from my stash. I really wanted to have a ton of blues on the bottom to represent the waves. Now, I did get inspiration for this section of the layout from Allison Davis over at Scrapbook Generation. She did a sketch support and she did this section and I remember thinking I want to do that and I was actually going to scrap lift her layout but then when I was planning out the layouts for the 30 days of sketches I saw this particular sketch and I said you know what I could absolutely use that section of Allison Davis's sketch and incorporate it into this sketch so that was my idea. I will link her blog post below. She does have a video. I will link it here for you. I don't know if she does or not. I'm not sure how old that layout is. She started doing the sketch support videos later on. She has several of them that does not have videos. In her blog post, she provides the silhouette number so that you can search for the silhouette pieces that she uses. So the pieces that I cut out from the silhouette, which are all of the blues, I got from her blog post where she listed the silhouette number. So I just purchased that same cut file and used it on this layout. And then I also used my border punch to punch out um, a smaller wave at the bottom, just because I wanted just a little bit of difference at the bottom. And then I also cut out the stripe paper here, and that allows me to bring in all of the colors. I'm going to add that to the very bottom of the layout. I did cut it at a quarter of an inch, but I actually end up having to cut another piece at a half of an inch because I did not move my wave paper down far enough. So I'm lining the paper up here so that you can see how I am going to be incorporating all of the colors. She has very similar colors. I really was looking for something that was similar where it has the lighter blue at the top and then it goes into more of a navy blue and then at the very bottom she does also have this like seafoam green. I love being able to take inspiration from other layouts that have been posted. I know that I post my videos and my layouts hoping that people will take inspiration from me. I really do enjoy being a person who's able to inspire others simply because I know that other people have inspired me and I feel like I like to give back to the community by providing layouts as well. So I feel like as long as you give credit to the person who created the layout, I have no problem with scrap lifting or mimicking their layouts. I did pull out my distress ink and inked up all of the edges. I felt like it would give the paper even more depth as if it was truly waves in the ocean. Allison's layouts are always beautiful layouts, but the amount of work that goes into her layouts, every single layout that I have ever tried to scrap lift of hers, I go in with the thought process that this is going to turn out beautifully, and I never think about the amount of work that goes into it. So I start to lay down these strips and I get all of the left hand side laid down. And when I start to work on the right hand side of the layout, I very quickly realize my mistake. I should have laid down the strips of paper on the left and then laid them down on the right hand side because I am about to have a ton of issues with getting these papers to line up. Of course, my green paper was not straight, so I did have to pull that up and use the T-square ruler to make sure it was straight. And then I did a little bit of paper shaving to make sure that the strips lined up with the edge of the paper. I made sure that the layout was even, 
and I lined up this first border strip. And I know that the border strips are not going to line up because I had a layout in the past where I had that exact same issue with a border strip that I was using. So I felt like as long as I'm able to tuck the border strips underneath other papers, it would be fine. But what ends up happening is I end up having a huge gap in one of the papers to the point where you're able to see the white cardstock underneath it. It moves down so much. You see here, I'm lining up the green and there's just a huge white space. I even thought, well, maybe I put the wrong piece together and tried it over on the right hand side and it wasn't. It just was not going to line up. So what I decided to do was to put it down so that there was no white showing. And then I used my X-Acto knife to cut off the piece that was overlapping so that it appears that it is touching and meets. Now, Allison Davis's layout is flawless across both pages. And I don't know how she did it. That woman is just super, super talented. So once I got that green piece down, I was able to lay the wave paper down and then also this green paper that has the fonts on it. Then I lay the quarter inch strip down and it is not big enough. There's another quarter of an inch that is at the bottom of the layout. At first I thought, well, maybe I'll just leave the white paper and just have that as the border, but I did not like the way that it looked. I also had a lot of struggles trying to get that stripe paper straight, which is very common for me. So I did have to pull it up a couple of times. I went ahead and laid down the right hand side of the layout and then I started looking through the pattern papers and I just wasn't liking it. So I decided to cut the stripe paper in a half of an inch and add that to the bottom and I like that so much better. But again, because the right hand side of the layout didn't line up, I had a white strip. So I pulled out this piece of paper from Echo Park and it's a stripe, but I really needed just that darker green. So I cut it on the opposite of what you would normally think to cut the stripe paper so that I would have just an eighth of an inch of this darker green color. I did use my distress ink to ink up the edges and really I inked up the entire thing because it was just so tiny that it was hard to just ink the edges. Normally when I do that, I just flip my layout over, lay the piece of paper flat to the layout and just go to town with my Distress Ink. Once I got it all inked up, I added some adhesive to the back of it and laid it both on the left and right of the layout. As I'm getting these down, I do want to encourage you to check out everyone who is playing along. There is a playlist below and you can check out how everyone else interpreted this sketch. Once I got the paper down, I pulled out my stitching tools and started to poke my holes. And man, were there a lot of holes. My TV is not directly in front of me, so when I'm poking holes, it's hard to see the TV. So I put the show on my iPad so that I could be closer to it while I was poking the holes. I'm currently doing a rewatch of Dawson's Creek, and this episode was The Scary Stories in Season 5. Once I got all of my holes poked, I pulled out my thread and matched up the thread with the paper. I did stitch off camera and I slow the video down here so that you can see all of the beautiful stitching that was done. This stitching actually was done mainly during Hurricane Helene. I have a post over in my Facebook group about the fact that I had purchased hurricane supplies, which really meant just snacks. And my hurricane supplies also included thread because even though I have a ton of blue thread, I just didn't have the right color. So I did have to pick up a couple of different colors to make sure that this layout worked. I then did some paper shaving to make sure that the border strips are all straight on the layout. And now it is time to lay the photos down. I followed the sketch pretty closely in regards to having the three photos on the left hand side with a four by six as well as a four by four and a four by three and then on the right hand side of the layout i had two four by sixes that i cut down to a four by four and then i also have a three by four i pulled out the tags from this collection when i saw this sketch i knew that this collection would work because simple stories usually has those tags in their collections and i knew i could use up a couple of those on this layout 
I pulled out the tags that have the palm fronds on them. It's like all different colors. The other one that I pulled out had some palm trees. And then the last one is pink and it has some blue waves on it. I do cut off the edges so that they actually look like tags and then inked up all of the edges so that it would match the waves at the bottom. I did use several colors and I'm really loving this pink with the different color blues. I then pulled out my quarter of an inch circle punch to punch the holes in the center. I start to lay out the tags and I really like this configuration, but I wanted to save some of the bottom pieces of it because I knew that I could use that grid paper in another layout. So I added my photos down and I just put adhesive on the bottom part of the photos since I knew that I was going to be tucking in those tags and I didn't want to have to pull that up which you know is not normal for me because I tend to use my spatula a lot. So I get the first two tags down and I add in that palm tree and I love the way that it looks. I did end up having to pull out my spatula because I still put too much adhesive down. And once I got these two tags down, I went to put the adhesive on the back of the one with the palm trees and I really liked the saying on this tag. It says, enjoy every moment. So I decided to take the adhesive off and use that side of the tag instead. Of course, using my spatula because I had already put the adhesive down on the pink tag. But then once I trimmed it down a little bit, I was able to fit it perfectly in there. And I love the way those tags look. I added the adhesive to the back of my photos so that they would lay flat. And then I pulled out this jute twine. I did pick this up at the Dollar Tree. I don't tend to buy a lot of my scrapbooking supplies there, but every once in a while they do have some really nice stuff. And I feel like this jute twine is going to last me forever. So I added the jute twine to all three of the tags and then started to work on the left-hand side of the layout. Pulling out my T-square ruler to line up the photos from the right to the left, I added that photo of Eli and my mom and then a photo of my sister and my niece. Then I realized that I had added the photo of Eli and my mom too close to the right-hand side of the layout. So I pulled that up and moved it over closer to the photo of my sister and my niece. I looked through the tags again, trying to find another tag to add on top of the photo of my mom and my nephew. And I couldn't find anything that I really liked. I looked through it several times. But I have another idea for these tags and I just wasn't willing to give up the tags that were there because I want to use them on another layout. So I decided to pull out the ephemera pieces and look through that to see if I can find anything that would work. And there were also some tags in the ephemera pieces and I found one that said beach day. I also found some other tags that I thought might work and I laid them out on the waves, but I really wasn't liking it. I decided to ink up the edges of that tag that says beach day with the flamingo pink, I think is what it's called. And I added that down, of course, adding the jute twine to that tag as well. Do you guys ever struggle with putting the jute twine on or really any ribbon? I feel like I can never get it to look the way that I want. I always put it in backwards and then have to take it out and put it back in the correct way or what I feel like is the correct way. I know they can go either way, but I just feel like it looks better when it's this way. So let me know in the comments below. Do you struggle putting twine on your tags? I pulled out the chipboard piece and I found this tag that says sun and fun and I added it right below the beach day. I then tried out the palm tree over on the right hand side, but I didn't really like that because the palm tree was covering up some of the words on that tag. I found this lifeguard stand and added that next to the beach day. And then I pulled out the ephemera pieces, looking through, seeing if I can find something else. And I did find another palm tree that was much smaller. And I liked the way that that looks next to that tag. I also pulled out a bunch of these little circles thinking that I could use those later. I looked through the foam adhesive, but I couldn't find anything that I liked. So I decided to ink up that palm tree and go ahead and adhere that down. I also added some liquid adhesive to both of the chipboard pieces because you know that those tend to not stick very well. Then I started looking through the sticker sheet trying to find something and I did end up finding a beach ball. I added some fun foam to the back of it and added it right above the palm tree on the right hand side. 
I also found another palm frond and added that behind the sun and fun. And then I found a surfboard and decided to put that up on fun foam and add it next to the palm tree on the right hand side of the layout. I found a little hibiscus flower and added that over to the left hand side. And I'm really building up these clusters and just loving the way that this looks. I found a little tag that says ocean breeze and added that over on the right hand side. Then I realized that I forgot to do the mixed media that's on the back part of the layout. Now, if you follow my channel at all, you know that I am a clean and simple girl and I don't do a lot of mixed media. This is about the extent of it. I have this Tim Holtz stencil that I think is called Tiny Dots. And I decided to just add a little bit of dots to the back part of the layout. I decided that I'm going to do it in this speckled egg color. I do it for both sides of the layout. And this is not an easy task to do if you already have liquid adhesive on your embellishment pieces. But I make it the best that I can. Then I decided that I could probably add some of the pink in as well to bring in the pink from all of the embellishment pieces. And I am not somebody who uses mixed media a lot. This is not a very dark mixed media, but I really like the way that it came out. I feel like that mixed media just adds an extra touch to it. I felt like I needed another cluster down on the bottom, but I was really struggling with it because I didn't want to cover up any of the waves. But I do end up adding that palm tree over to the right hand side and then I felt like I needed something else. I tried all of those pieces that are like wood planks but I didn't like any of them. I also tried out this floral but I wasn't liking that as well. I just wanted smaller pieces because I didn't want to cover up the waves. I did find this little sign that says to the beach and I thought it would be cool if I could tuck it underneath some of the wave pieces so that it looked like it was stuck in there. I also pulled out the adhesive brad and I added a brad that says flip flop paradise. Because I added a brad to that cluster I felt like I needed a brad in each one of the other clusters so I just found a brad for each cluster. I then pulled out this little tag and I thought that I could add the date. But because of the stitching, I knew that I needed to add the date before I adhered it down because I knew I would not be able to get the date down. So I pulled out my phone to try to find the date and then using a gray color, I put the date on with my roller date stamp. I cut off the excess and then added some liquid adhesive to my palm trees and then added the date behind the palm trees. Then I pulled out my color boxes in pink, yellow, and my wood veneer and added some enamel dots around the layout. I love being able to add that wood veneer. I feel like it gives it a more of a beachy vibe. So I do add a wood veneer heart to each one of the clusters and then that finishing touch with the yellow enamel dots. I did do my journaling off camera. As I'm getting all of those pieces down, let me just read my journaling to you. It says, Eli, Nana, Jennifer, and Navea are living their best beach life at Cocoa Beach. Sunshine, smiles, and sandy shenanigans galore. And I added my journaling over on the right next to the surfboard. And then that is it for this video. Here is my final layout as well as some close-ups. Make sure you come back tomorrow for another day of sketches. If you enjoyed this video, if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. If you haven't done so already and you want to see more double page layout inspiration, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope that you have a scrappy day.